going to cover Amazon ECAS nodes and talk about what that means. When I was first getting started with ECAS and Kubernetes in general, I actually found this a little bit confusing. Maybe it's just because there's just so much surface area to cover when we learn Kubernetes. So I thought actually this video might be helpful for those who are getting started. So here's the documentation. We're gonna click on nodes here. And it says, your Amazon ECAS cluster can schedule pods on any combination of self-managed nodes, managed node groups, and AWS Fargate. So what does that mean, okay? Uh, well, Amazon ECAS is a Kubernetes service. It's a Kubernetes as a service. So basically, AWS is supposed to manage Kubernetes for you, right? Well, the fact is, AWS ECAS, as well as other cloud pro uh, providers, manages essentially the control plane for you, the Kubernetes control plane, or the master, or the API servers, okay? Uh, it doesn't actually manage the compute nodes or the worker nodes, okay? You still need to bring, basically, and supply that capacity to your EKS cluster. So that's what that means. These are three different ways to supply capacity to that EKS cluster, okay? And starting from number one here, self-managed nodes, that's the most control as well as the most difficult. What you do is you spin up basically EC2 instances and you make sure that EC2 instance has the proper Kubernetes worker software installed on it, essentially Kubelet, and also a user data script that's gonna run during launch time that's gonna register that EC2 instance to the EKS cluster. So then it can be part of the supply. So then you can schedule pods, okay? Uh, and typically, uh, people use EC2 instances with auto scaling groups, and they actually use the EKS uh, official AMI also, okay? And that's how typically people do it, and that uh, gives you the most control, okay? Now, managed node groups is exactly what it sounds like. It's a managed group of nodes, okay? Uh, and what AWS has done is basically they say, okay, well, people are using auto scaling groups to basically build basically a, a group of servers to register an EKS cluster, so we're gonna do that for you. So that's what that is. Managed node groups is interesting because AWS is just using AWS uh, or auto scaling underneath, okay? And then they're just making sure that it has all the proper software configured and it's making sure that's gonna register ECAS cluster and then they're gonna maintain that for you, okay? So that's pretty nice. And then the last option is AWS Fargate. So this is supposed to be the uh, easiest option because you don't even have to manage the configuration of your node group anymore. All you do is basically specify how much CPU and RAM you need and then Fargate will figure out figure out. So some, some people call this serverless, okay? Um, so it's just, you don't have to manage the server, essentially, that's what it is. Or you don't have to manage the configuration of the server. So from one here, self-managed group, self-managed nodes, to two managed node groups, to AWS Fargate, from left to right here, in terms of difficultiness, number one is the most difficult, number two is uh, intermediate there, and then number three is supposed to be the least amount of difficult, okay? Of course, with every single pro, there are some cons, there are some trade-offs, and essentially, the trade-off is the amount of control you have and flexibility. So you have the most amount of flexibility to have self-managed nodes. With managed node groups, uh, you have a little bit less flexibility, though you still have a decent amount of flexibility, okay? And at AWS Fargate, you definitely have the least amount of flexibility. Essentially, you can't uh, get into the host, okay? Fargate is kind of interesting. Actually, it spins up a host close to the uh, RAM and CPU requirements you need, and it's a dedicated host, actually, okay? So. There's also, because of the difficulty varies, there's also a pricing consideration. So prices are different too. But here's the interesting part. Self-managed node groups and managed node groups are actually the same price, okay? You just pay for the underlying EC2 compute capacity, okay? Uh, AWS Fargate, you actually pay a premium. So there's a premium for the basically the added convenience there, okay? And there's also some kind of uh, restrictions around Fargate too and some caveats, you know? So typically what actually people do is they kind of sell for a balance right in the middle here with managed node groups because now you don't have to kind of manage kind of configuring the auto scaling groups and all that kind of stuff. All you do is manage the configuration at this level and you still have a, a decent amount of control. You can even SSH in the boxes and stuff. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so that covers the differences between EKS nodes, okay? And hopefully that was helpful. Cheers.